Boeing is quietly planning the biggest twin-engine passenger jet the world has ever seen. At the exact same time, major airlines are building their future routes around an Airbus aircraft Boeing doesn't even have. That contradiction sits at the center of a shift that's reshaping long-haul aviation right now. On one end, Boeing is betting on a massive new widebody designed to move huge crowds between the world's busiest hubs. On the other, airlines are proving they can cross oceans with a single aisle, lower costs, and far less risk. One strategy is still years away. The other is already changing airline maps, and the warning signs are no longer subtle. American Airlines, Air Canada, and others are making fleet decisions that quietly sideline Boeing from entire parts of the market. When airlines start planning routes without you in mind, it's not just a missed sale, it's a loss of influence. And what's happening next could define Boeing's place in commercial aviation for decades. For Boeing, the answer to long-haul pressure at the top of the market is something called the 777-10. It's a proposed stretch of the 777X program. And if it ever enters service, it would become the largest twin-engine passenger aircraft ever offered. Bigger than anything flying today without relying on four engines. The idea is simple, but risky. Airlines are retiring Airbus A380As and aging Boeing 747s faster than expected. Those jets are expensive to maintain, complex to operate, and increasingly out of step with fuel and emissions targets. Boeing believes there's still a narrow window where airlines need massive capacity, just without the four-engine baggage that came with it. The 777-10 is designed to fill that gap. More seats than the 777-9, optimized for dense, long-haul routes where demand never drops and airport slots are limited. Think major hubs where airlines would rather move more people per flight then add frequencies they can't get approved. Under the wing, Boeing plans to rely on the GE-9X, already developed for the 777-9. Each engine produces over 100,000 pounds of thrust, enough at least on paper, to lift an aircraft this large across continents with just two engines. Pair that with a massive composite wing, folding wingtips to fit airport gates and improved fuel efficiency and Boeing sees the 777-10 as a cleaner, simpler successor to jets airlines are desperate to move on from. But there's a catch. This aircraft doesn't exist yet, and it won't exist until the 777-9 clears certification, something that's already taken far longer than Boeing expected. And while Boeing is looking years ahead to replace the biggest jets in the sky, airlines have been solving a very different problem right now. That problem isn't about moving too many passengers. It's about moving just enough. Across the industry, airlines have been rethinking routes that sit in an uncomfortable middle ground. Too long for traditional narrow-body aircraft, but too thin to justify flying wide bodies that bleed money when seats don't fill. For years, those routes were either ignored or flown at a loss simply to maintain network presence. This is where Boeing's strategy starts to look lopsided. While the company focuses on ultra-high capacity jets for the busiest corridors, demand growth hasn't been uniform. Airlines want flexibility. They want aircraft that can reach faraway destinations without forcing them to gamble on hundreds of seats every time they launch a route. Slot-constrained hubs still matter, but they're no longer the whole story. Secondary cities, seasonal demand, and point-to-point -point travel are growing faster than anyone predicted a decade ago. And on those routes, seat mile economics don't reward size, they reward precision. That shift has pushed airlines toward a different kind of long-range aircraft, not bigger, smarter, one that trades prestige and capacity for efficiency and lower risk. And while Boeing has talked about solving this space for years, another manufacturer quietly went ahead and built the plane airlines we're waiting for. That aircraft is the Airbus A321 XLR, 
and its impact is already impossible to ignore. On paper, it doesn't look dramatic. Single aisle, narrow body, a design that traces its roots back years. But what Airbus did with the XLR changed the rules. With structural reinforcements, upgraded landing gear, and a permanent rear center fuel tank, the jet can fly roughly 4,700 nautical miles without sacrificing passenger capacity. That range unlocks routes. Airlines simply couldn't justify before. Transatlantic flights from the U.S. East Coast to Western Europe, deep South America, long overwater sectors that once demanded wide-body economics. Now they can be flown with far fewer seats, lower fuel burn, and dramatically reduced trip costs. This is exactly where wide bodies struggle. Industry data shows that on thinner long-haul routes, large aircraft often lose money, even when they're technically capable of flying the distance. The A321 XLR flips that equation by matching capacity to demand instead of forcing demand to match the aircraft. Boeing has no answer here. The longest range single aisle jet in its lineup, the 737-10, falls well short of this mission profile. The company studied a new midsize aircraft for years, a jet designed to sit between narrow bodies and wide bodies. But that program was shelved and nothing replaced it. And the consequences of that decision aren't theoretical anymore. They're showing up in airline order books, route maps, and some very public first flights. One of those moments played out quietly, but symbolically, at Dallas-Fort Worth. After an 11-hour non-stop flight from Hamburg, Germany, an Airbus A321 XLR touched down in the United States marking the first time this aircraft had operated such a mission for a U.S. carrier. For American Airlines, it wasn't just another delivery. It was proof that long-haul flying no longer needed a wide body, and more importantly, proof that Boeing wasn't part of that equation. American has ordered 50 A321 XLRS, making it one of the largest customers for the type Airline executives have openly said the jet allows them to launch routes that were never viable before. Routes with demand that's real, but not big enough to justify hundreds of seats. Routes that connect secondary cities directly, instead of forcing passengers through crowded hubs. In public comments reported by Reuters, American confirmed the aircraft would support longer, thinner routes that better match demand. That language matters. It signals a shift away from flying planes just to fill seats and toward flying planes that fit the market precisely. And Boeing has nothing in this category. No comparable aircraft, no announced program, no timeline. For American, the decision wasn't framed as choosing Airbus over Boeing. It was framed as choosing capability over absence. What makes this more serious is how rare these moments are. Once an airline commits to a new aircraft family, it's not a short-term bet. Pilot training, maintenance systems, spare parts, and simulator investments lock that decision in for decades. An American isn't alone in making that call. Other airlines are following the same path, and with every order placed, the door gets harder for Boeing to reopen. That lock-in effect is where the long-term damage really starts. Airlines don't switch aircraft families casually. Once crews are trained, maintenance teams are certified, and infrastructure is built around a specific jet, reversing course becomes expensive and unlikely. That's why analysts say the A321 XLR isn't just winning orders, it's capturing an entire segment Boeing once planned to dominate. United Airlines, JetBlue, and multiple international carriers have committed to the XLR for similar missions. According to industry reports cited by Reuters, Airbus has already secured more than 500 orders for the aircraft. That kind of volume signals confidence not just in the jet itself, but in the strategy behind it. 
Boeing executives have acknowledged the gap in public forums, but acknowledgements don't move airplanes. The company has not launched a replacement for the canceled midsize aircraft program, and analysts say current production and certification pressures make a near-term launch unlikely. Every year that passes without an answer strengthens Airbus's hold on the market. This imbalance is happening while Boeing is still dealing with internal constraints. Ongoing regulatory oversight, supply chain bottlenecks, and manufacturing quality issues have forced the company to focus on stabilizing what it already builds rather than betting billions on something new. Airbus, meanwhile, has gone in the opposite direction. Production targets show a growing share of its narrow-body output being allocated to A321 variants, driven by higher demand and better margins. The company is betting that airlines want more flexibility, not more size. And just when it seemed like Boeing's challenges were mostly about aircraft, it doesn't have. Another airline made a move that raised even deeper questions about confidence in the jets. Boeing already delivers. That airline is Air Canada, and the move caught a lot of people off guard. Beginning in early 2026, every Boeing 737 MAX aircraft will be removed from Air Canada's mainline service. Not retired, not sold off. Instead, they'll be transferred to Air Canada Rouge, the airline's leisure-focused subsidiary. The decision is already scheduled, documented, and set to roll out over the course of the year. On the surface, this might not sound dramatic. The planes are staying in the fleet. They're still flying. But in airline strategy, where an aircraft is used matters just as much as whether it's used at all. Mainline service is where airlines deploy jets they trust for core routes, premium passengers, and long-term network stability. Moving an aircraft out of that role sends a message. Air Canada has spent years reshaping its fleet around wide body efficiency and long haul strength. Shifting the 737 MAX into a leisure operation suggests the aircraft no longer fits the airline's primary vision the way it once did. It's a quiet downgrade, but a meaningful one. And this decision lands at a bad time for Boeing. The company has already faced order cancellations, delayed programs, and billions in losses. When one of North America's largest airlines adjusts its fleet strategy in a way that reduces Boeing's visibility at the core of its network, others take notice. What makes this more concerning is that Air Canada isn't reacting to a single incident. This is a forward-looking move, planned years in advance. It reflects how airlines are thinking about risk, flexibility, and future growth. Put together with American Airlines' XLR bet and Airbus's growing dominance in the long-range narrowbody space, a pattern starts to emerge. Boeing isn't just missing opportunities. It's being designed out of future networks. And that raises a bigger question about where all of this is heading. When you step back and look at these moves together, the picture becomes hard to ignore. Boeing is betting its long-term recovery on aircraft that don't exist yet, aimed at markets that are shrinking faster than expected. The 777-10 assumes airlines will continue to need massive jets to move huge volumes between a small number of global hubs. That demand may exist, but it's narrow, selective, and years away from turning into firm orders. At the same time, airlines are making very real very permanent decisions about how they fly today. They're choosing aircraft that let them open routes with less risk, adjust capacity quickly, and avoid the financial pain of flying half-empty wide bodies. In that world, flexibility beats size. Airbus understood that shift early. Instead of chasing the next super jumbo, it focused on stretching efficiency out of smaller aircraft. The A321 XLR isn't flashy, but it's exactly what airlines asked for. And once those aircraft enter service, they shape networks for decades. Boeing's challenge now isn't just about launching the right airplane, it's about timing. Every year without a response, 
locks competitors in deeper. Every airline that commits to a different platform redraws the map in ways Boeing can't easily undo. The danger for Boeing isn't losing a single sale or even an entire program. It's waking up one day to find that airlines no longer design their futures around Boeing at all. And in an industry where aircraft decisions echo for generations, that may be the hardest loss to recover from. So where does this leave Boeing? The company is still a titan of aviation with decades of experience, cutting edge engineering, and massive production capabilities. But experience alone won't fix a misalignment between what airlines need today and what Boeing is planning for tomorrow. The 777-10 may one day dominate the skies, but that day is years away. Meanwhile, competitors are already flying the routes, building loyalty, and locking in infrastructure around aircraft Boeing hasn't delivered. Every canceled program, delayed certification, or strategic misstep adds weight to the perception that Boeing is reactive rather than proactive. And in a market as competitive and high stakes as global aviation, perception often drives reality. Airlines are making choices now that will influence fleets, routes, and partnerships for decades. When Boeing eventually launches new models, it may find that the market it imagined has already moved on. The story unfolding isn't just about aircraft. It's about influence, timing, and strategy in an industry where mistakes are magnified over decades. Airbus is showing that understanding airline needs and acting on them first creates long-term advantages that aren't easily undone. Boeing has its sights set on the next generation of wide bodies. But the question lingers. By the time those jets are ready, will airlines still be waiting? It's a high-stakes gamble, and the next chapter in commercial aviation could redefine which company sets the rules for the sky. If you found this inside, look at Boeing and Airbus as fascinating as I did. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. At Aviation Insights, we dive deep into the strategies, stories, and secrets shaping the skies, so you won't miss the next big move in aviation. Subscribe now and stay ahead of the curve. curve.